Hello, and welcome to the Love Your Work Life podcast. I'm your host, Elisa Shuck. Whether you're going for that next promotion, looking for a job, or making a career pivot, I'll teach you how to navigate it all so you can have the career you want. Welcome to the Love Your Work Life podcast, episode 18. One of the most frustrating things, I think, potentially most frustrating things about going through a job search process and particularly the interview portion of that process is not getting feedback, not getting answers about what's happening in that process. And it's totally understandable. In fact, I would agree that a company should send you an email and let you know whether or not you got the job, whether or not you're moving forward. There's really no excuse not to because, of course, many people are using applicant tracking systems. Back in my corporate career, I used an applicant tracking system. And really, to be honest, I could compose those emails in advance. And when I had gone through the applicants and I had gone through the you know, first round interviews, it was so easy, it was a click of a button for me to let a candidate know that they were not moving forward. So I would agree completely that it's important to not let candidates hang out there waiting and wondering. The other thing that I think a lot of candidates don't do, a lot of job seekers are a little nervous about doing, is following up. If you haven't heard back, then it's perfectly reasonable to send an email. You know, you're going to have to be all salesy or anything, just casually. Hi, just checking in. I really enjoyed our conversation last week. Would really love to learn where you are in your process and what I can expect regarding next steps. So easy. No desperate feelings, no graspiness, just genuine curiosity. Where do I stand in this process? Please do not be shy about sending those follow-ups. It doesn't mean you're going to get an answer to that one either. I would hope you would, but if that helps you feel better, then send that follow-up because the chances are someone has gotten busy and they are behind on their follow-ups. And if nothing else, a polite follow-up from somebody who maybe you're the number two or the number three candidate. Imagine if the first choice candidate falls through or doesn't accept the offer. Who are they going to be going to? They're going to be going to number two. And that is your opportunity. That well-written, thoughtful follow-up could be the thing that puts you over the top. And so instead of starting over, they go to you because you were the one that followed up. You're the one that's going to get another look. You're planting a seed for down the road too. What if another role opens? Many times I would go back through resumes and look for those candidates who I wasn't able to hire at the time, but they had some really great qualities. And I would definitely like to talk to them again about a new role. So yes, please do not be shy about following up. But here's the thing. Do not ask for feedback after you get your answer about why you didn't get hired. I kind of go nuts when I see posts on LinkedIn talking about hiring managers owe candidates an explanation about why they didn't get hired and why they didn't get chosen. No, no, and no. Number one, there could be legal reasons why they can't actually say. There are rules about these things. If there's not rules coming from the government in that state, then sometimes there's just company policy that prevents a hiring manager who would love to share with you that they just can't. That's a lot of times the reason. 
But here is the reason I don't want you asking for that kind of feedback is because why would you want the opinion of someone you don't know, someone who doesn't really know you, and someone who didn't want you? That's the fact. You were not chosen for that role. Why do you want to know the opinion of someone who didn't pick you? I get it. You're grasping for a reason. It's totally normal. It's the way your brain, it's the way our brains want to make sense of things. Uh, Our brains love harmony. They like it when everything fits together and we've got a reason for everything. But more times than not, even if you got that feedback, all that's going to happen is you're going to feel worse or you're going to feel confused because you thought you did a great job. You thought you really connected with that person. And chances are you did, but the feedback isn't going to help you. You can still satisfy your brain's need for an answer though. And this is how you get reliable feedback about your interviews is trusting yourself to give you the answer. Well, how do you do that? How can you trust yourself? Well, first of all, acknowledging what you can control in an interview situation. And the truth is, the only thing you can control is you. And when you realize that, and you realize for your part that you are in control, you'll start to feel better. The next thing is taking responsibility for your part of the interview. This is, this is a big deal because taking responsibility doesn't often feel great. I don't know what taking responsibility looks like for you. Did you share all the accomplishments you wanted to share? Was your tech in great shape? There's lots of things that, you know, ultimately you can think about and say, okay, I'm going to take responsibility for that. Listen, when you take responsibility, that's taking ownership. That's controlling what you can control. It's actually quite empowering to take ownership, to take responsibility instead of blaming the other person. Well, they weren't really listening or they didn't really understand what I was trying to say or they seemed distracted. It doesn't do you any good to play the blame game and put all of that responsibility on the other person. The way you feel empowered, the way you feel in control is taking responsibility. Another way to do that is to stop looking for outside validation. I often think that this asking for feedback is, yes, it's it's the way our brain works and it's the way we kind of put the pieces together, but sometimes I think it's looking for outside validation. It's looking for that you were great. But if that you were great is followed up by the word but, you were great but somebody else was a stronger candidate, it doesn't do you any good. Asking for feedback is kind of like a relationship breakup. And you want to know why. And Isn't it crazy how you want so much to hear from the person that just rejected you, just broke up with you, what did I do wrong? You may never hear it. And oftentimes, their idea of things is slanted. It's only their opinion. It's their filter about the circumstance that you're dealing with, not the reality of what actually happened. So here's what I want you to do going forward from every single conversation. This is part of the interview prep worksheets that I give to my clients. I'm going to have these prep sheets for you to download in the show notes. But if you look at these prep sheets, step three of these is always an evaluation. This is where you get the feedback and you get it because you're asking yourself three questions in this exact order after every single interview conversation you have. 
The first one is what worked. The reason I like you to start with what worked is because you are allowed to give yourself credit and to celebrate and feel a sense of accomplishment and success about what did work. Maybe you did get that great sense of connection with someone. Maybe you were so on point with one of your answers. Write all that stuff out. And this is handwritten. Write out what worked with as much detail and specificity as you can remember. And this is why I want you to do it immediately after because all of that stuff about the interview is going to be fresh in your mind. The other reason you start with what worked is because when you feel good and you're allowing yourself to think positively about that experience, then you're turning on higher levels of critical thinking in your brain and the next two questions will be much easier to answer very objectively, very clearly. Question number two, what didn't work? This is not the opportunity to beat yourself up. This is your opportunity to take responsibility. Maybe you were rushed going into it. Uh, Maybe you didn't do enough research about the company. These are all things that you can identify and you can take responsibility for. It doesn't mean you're a horrible person. It just means that there were some things that didn't work. That's okay. That's life. That's what happens. That's what happens in business, and it's what happens in life, and it's what happens in job interviews. No reason to think you're a horrible person or that you're terrible at interviews because there were some bits about it that didn't work. The last one is, what would I do differently? This is key. And the reason I love having you include this in your reflection on that interview and in the feedback that you're giving yourself about the interview is when you think about what you would do differently, what you're actually doing is preparing for the next interview. Next time I'm going to give myself 15 minutes to just chill before I get on that call. Better yet. Next time, give yourself 45 minutes to do my interview prep because you'll feel so much more empowered. All right. You know what those things are that you would do differently that would elevate that conversation. When you do this, when you give yourself this opportunity, when you give yourself this feedback, you will elevate every conversation you have from that point on. You'll feel more in control of those interviews. The feedback that you give yourself can be trusted. When you're taking responsibility, and you're asking yourself these questions from an honest, curious place, you can absolutely trust the answers that you're giving. Our brain loves to answer questions. So ask yourself these questions about every single interview, look at it as feedback to yourself. Care about yourself as someone who knows you well. You know yourself better than anyone else, especially a stranger who spent a few hours with you. All right, give yourself the feedback and improve every single interview going forward. All right, thanks everybody. I'll talk to you again soon. Hey, if you enjoy listening to this podcast, you have to come check out my Love Your Work Life programs on Teachable. You can choose from on-demand courses or personalized one-on-one coaching with me. We take all of this material and apply it so that you can live it and create the career you want. Because when you love your work life, all the other parts of life get better too. So go to Love Your Work Life Teachable as search terms or love-your-work-life.teachable.com. I will see you there.